Hey there, gang. How are you doing today on the podcast? We are going to be diving into your nervous system more today. And if you are watching here on our YouTube channel, instead of listening on the podcast, which you can do both now, if you haven't heard yet, I'm going to be showing you some visuals to help sort of drive this whole piece of your nervous system home. And it is going to be giving you some major light bulb moments today. So first of all, before we get started, want to ask for a prayer request. In Utah, we have had crazy amounts of snow this season. We are over 800 inches of snow at our ski resorts, and we are going from 25 degrees last week to now 70 degree temperatures in the valley this week. We are forecasted to experience heavy, heavy flooding. The last time this happened was in 1983, where our streets were closed down, our city streets, there, the National Guard was brought in because everything was flooding. People's basements were filling with mud. It was just a really horrible thing. So this week, as we have been sandbagging and preparing communities and all of that, just want to ask for your prayers that you will pray that there will be no physical uh, problems that happen. Like we want to protect lives and animal lives. And I know that structures can be rebuilt, but if we could have your prayers to protect people's homes and businesses and all those things, it would be so, so much appreciated. So, okay. Now in your body, you have your nervous system. And I talked about this a little bit last week about burnout and why you experience physical pain when you are in overload. But I'm going to get really specific today and I'm going to teach you about the hierarchy of your nervous system in a way that's going to explain why. And some of you have this happen, right? Like you, you could go in your network marketing business. You have these products that change your life. You feel so good. And then all of a sudden what happens? All of your autoimmune issues come back. All of your blood sugar imbalance issues come back. Your thyroid starts acting up. Why is this happening? I'm going to talk to you about it today and we're going to hit a bunch of other things too, but it's all related and it's going to make so much sense why you need to do these six exercises that I'm going to, I'm going to give you. You can actually go right now if you're listening to the podcast and you're not driving your car or whatever, but you can just go to our website, emilygibsoncoaching.com forward slash heal yourself. And as you're listening to the podcast today, you can have this worksheet that I've prepared for you. You can download it. You can fill it in as we talk here. You can do the worksheet on yourself. And not only is it going to help heal your body physically and emotionally, but it's going to do it on a nervous system level. What we are hearing people say that have recorded, that have downloaded this worksheet in the last week is that within 72 hours, they are seeing significant improvement in their general well being. Their trauma responses are going away. They are just feeling better all around. And so I have to share it with you because I would feel like I was doing you a disservice, not sharing this with you. And I just made this for you on a whim. Literally, it was a super snowy day and I was sitting in my living room and I just thought, I wish that people could know how I healed my body from trauma and abuse. I wish that they could know that no matter what they're going through, we all go through trauma, by the way. A lot of times we don't connect with the word trauma because we think it's like has to be something really severe, but we've all had traumatic experiences in our life. It doesn't have to be something like life altering or sexual abuse or physical abuse. It doesn't even have to be emotional abuse in the way that we uh, define it. It can just be any sort of perceived danger that your body is not able to resolve in a short amount of time that lingers long-term that can cause trauma to the body. So this can even be like, uh, the, like the death of a dog can cause trauma to you. You, you grieve. If you treat your dog like a baby, like I do, <laughs> you will grieve the loss of that animal like a human. And the same thing can happen with a job 
or an old business partner or any of those things. And I, we, we have episodes here on the podcast about grief and I I've shared with you what, what to expect when you're grieving and all of that. So go back to that episode and, and give that a listen. But for today, we're going to focus in on this hierarchy of your nervous system and what you have to do to start toning the nervous system nerve called your ventral vagal nerve in order to feel better whatever it is you're struggling with, whether it's burnout from work, like we talked about last week, or if it's something more severe and trauma related or abuse related, and you've just never been able to get over it. Like if you are listening here on the podcast and you've suffered from some sort of severe trauma and abuse, or even just not even that severe trauma, and maybe it was just like work trauma or work abuse, or maybe you're married to a narcissist, or maybe you think you might be married to a narcissist, or maybe you had a friend that was a narcissist or an old business partner, and something in that relationship happened where you were abused over a long period of time and you just can't feel better and you don't know why. We're going to talk and hit on all of that today. It's going to empower you. It's going to put tools in your hands today so that in 72 hours, you can have significant improvement in the way that your body feels. You're going to be able to be sleeping better. You're going to have more energy. You're going to notice a significant change. And I'm so excited to bring this to you. So on a snowy night, I just wrote down everything that worked for me and how I was finally able to break my trauma bonds and start healing my body on a nervous system level. And it has changed everything for my life in such a quick way. And so I had to share it with you. Okay. So I'm going to show you a picture here. If you're listening, if you're watching here on the YouTube channel, if not what, uh, what, what people are seeing, you can always go to the YouTube channel and check it out. Uh, or if you just want to listen on the podcast, I'm going to explain it to you. All my visual people, you're going to imagine this in your mind. If you can't see it here on the YouTube version of this. Okay. But you can always go back and watch it later on YouTube or whatever you'd like to do. So what I'm holding up here are three blocks stacked on top of each other. The bottom block is green. The middle block is yellow and the block on top is red. Okay. And this symbolizes your nervous system, the hierarchy of your nervous system. It's actually called polyvagal theory. And what is proven, it's scientifically proven, you guys, that your body operates on this hierarchy of a nervous system. When you're born, you're born with your fight or flight and your freeze response. Okay. So freeze is that red block on top. Again, just imagine like toy blocks uh, in your kid's playroom or at daycare at nursery or whatever. You've got green, red, sorry, green, yellow, and red, just like red light, green light. Okay. This is the traffic lights of tolerance within your nervous system. Okay. And in here, the bottom block is green. That's safe. That's your door. So that's, that's your ventral vagal nervous system. Okay. Then the yellow block is your sympathetic nervous system. That's your fight or flight. We're going to talk about that today. There's so many cool things about your fight or flight nervous system that you don't even realize you're engaging all day, every day, even when there's no danger present. And then the top block is your freeze, your dorsal vagal uh, nervous system, okay? And you're born with your freeze and fight or flight. Everybody's born that way. It's why when a baby is born, they come out screaming, laughing, and crying. Because when they are coming into the world, they don't feel safe. They were safe in mom's womb before they came out. Now they're cold. They don't know where their mom is. The nice, warm, uh, cozy, like amniotic sac that they were in has been broken viciously and now they're out, right? Or maybe they had a C-section or whatever. Like they came into the world and their body is like fight, flight, freeze, right? It's just laying there crying, someone help me. And we are not born with the ability to let our nervous system know we are safe. So this is something that's really important. If you've ever worked with a therapist that's not trauma-informed. Now, trauma-informed is does not mean you know about trauma. You've heard about it, so you're informed. No, trauma-informed is an accredited certification. That's the certification that I have. And when you are certified and trauma-informed and accredited here in the United States, it means that you can even, you can help people with their trauma 
uh, at a level higher than even some therapists that aren't trauma informed. And I am not here to say like, I love therapy, please. All the therapists listening. I love you. I honor your work. I have mad skill, mad, mad respect for your skills and what you do. And I am not dis counting or discrediting uh, the need for therapists in our ecosphere of life, because there is a place for everyone, coaches, therapists, psychologists, uh, psychiatrists, we need all of them, right? But if you're not trauma informed, then you shouldn't be working with people to help in their trauma. And here's why. Uh, for example, when I first started to try and heal my trauma, I thought that I could just hire any coach, any life coach. I even thought if I went to the best life coach school that I would be able to heal. And it just, it wasn't fair to expect that because they weren't trauma informed. And now the, the school that I certified through for my original certification, they are doing a lot of work and a lot of training and a lot of education around what trauma informed is, how to handle it with your clients. But back when I went through the school, it just wasn't something that anybody really talked about until I went through master coach training. And then they were like, okay, we're noticing that you're having a nervous system response here. But what I want to say is that a lot of times when you're working with a coach, that's not trauma informed, and you're someone who's been through trauma or abuse or whatever, um, a lot of times what they are trained to say to you is you create your own safety. Safety is something that you create within yourself. Well, as a trauma-informed coach, you know that that's not even true on a nervous system level. You don't create your own safety in your nervous system. Your safety is created by the toning of your ventral vagus nerve. You are not born with it. And if you were not taught it in childhood by your parents, then you don't have that muscle. That's a nerve strengthened enough to create your own safety. So that's why people that have trauma and abuse often spend all of their time in fight or flight or freeze. And they find frustration when they go to a coach or a therapist that's not trauma informed. And they hear things like, you create your own safety. You can be safe if you want to. And it just, they, they don't know they mean well, but they just don't know what that feels like. Um, and, and what that's doing to some, some, I'm, I'm not trying to speak like, you don't need to email me if this is upsetting you. I love you so much. <laughs> and I hope that I'm explaining it in a way that makes sense to those of you who are suffering from trauma and abuse, and you just can't figure out why you can't get better. Okay. The reason why you can't get better whether it was burnout in your network marketing company or burnout in maybe you had like, maybe you're in an abusive marriage emotionally or physically or whatever it is. Maybe you were abused as a child and now you've grown up and you've, you've married a really wonderful person and you don't know why you just can't get over what happened to you in your childhood. That's who I'm speaking to today. I want to speak to you where you feel stuck. You feel lost. You feel like you're never going to get better. You feel like you are tainted. You feel like it's in the way of growing your business. That's why I want to talk to you about today because when you have unresolved trauma and abuse, it will prevent you from growing your business and being successful if you don't have the skills and tools to help yourself through it. You can have success after trauma, and I have an amazing system that's going to help you do that. If all you do is just go to the website, emilygibsoncoaching.com forward slash heal yourself, instant download, and it's going to give you six exercises to tone this ventral vagus nerve that you are not born with that is going to make it so that you can go in and out of your fight or flight and freeze response more easily, okay? So I wanna talk about what happens and what it looks like to be in these different zones, this different hierarchy of your nervous system, right? So there's this nerve, the ventral vagus nerve that runs all throughout your body. And it, it really is like a muscle. Like I know it's a nerve. I, I understand that. I know this, right? But the best way that I can describe it to you is a muscle that needs to be exercised just like your body, except it's a nerve. Did you know that your eyeballs are a muscle, but they're also a nerve. And when you ex when you do eye exercises, it can actually bring you better vision. I had 
Uh, I, I grew up a, a, around a lot of airline pilots. My mom was a flight attendant. My dad was a flight attendant and grew up around a lot of pilots. And there was one pilot in particular that told me that he did eye exercises every single night. Everyone in his family wore glasses, but he did these eye exercises every single night where he'd close his eyes and he would roll his eyeballs as far back into his head as he could. He would hold it there and count to eight and then roll it down and do the same thing. Look to the right and do the same thing. Look to the left and do the same thing. And he had 20. 2020 perfect vision his whole life because of it. And so there is something to be said about strengthening your nerves, strengthening your nervous system, as if you were going to do cardio or, or lift weights and strengthen your biceps. They, it needs your attention just like anything else, but it's way easier than getting on the treadmill or lifting weights. I promise it's literally so simple. And when you download this, it's going to teach you six easy things that you can do. One of them, you don't even have to move out of your chair to do it. actually most of them you don't have to. And then some of them, it's just like turning your shower to cold for the last minute if you don't want to like do a cold plunge or whatever. But there's lots of ideas. And if you'll just do one thing a day uh, for um, for five days in a row, you will see significant improvement uh, immediately. And then as you do it over time, you are going to have your whole life changed and you're going to feel better. You're going to have finally a shift this is the thing that's finally going to work for you. And I wish I would have found it sooner, but I'm so glad that I can give it to you today because I've been searching for two years now and it it's, it's the only thing that's ever helped me. And I've tried everything. Okay. So your ventral vagal nervous system is where you feel safe. This is where you're feeling peaceful. This is where you're like sitting in the grass, listening to the birds chirp. Everything's happy. You feel really calm. You feel love. You feel joy. You feel safe, right? And then when something happens, like for example, you hear a siren and you think, oh my gosh, where's my family? Did someone get in a car accident? Did someone die? And you, your heart starts to race a little bit and you maybe sweat a little bit. Maybe you text your husband to see where he is. Why aren't they home yet? They should be home by now. Maybe, um, maybe you start to like feel a little bit shaky that is your fight or flight sympathetic nervous system. It's where you mobilize energy and that's the yellow light. That's where you mobilize energy. Sometimes you can feel a little bit edgy when you're in that. And it's where your body releases cortisol and adrenaline into your bloodstream. Did you know that your brain has a built-in pharmacy? All the drugs that you can get at the pharmacy your brain can make in its own body if stimulated correctly. Oxytocin started in the brain. Your brain can make it. It's actually the it's actually the um the drug that your body releases when you have a baby and when you're breastfeeding a baby. Also why you fall madly in love with your 15-year-old boyfriend. <laughs> oxytocin love best human emotion on earth it's a chemical it's a drug released hormone released into the bloodstream makes you feel amazing all over right we're feeling that in the ventral vagal the green light the safe okay then something happens that signals a possibility of a threat there's danger 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 cortisol cortisol we need cortisol and it releases an acute stress response. So you can mobilize energy. You can get up and do something about it. You utilize your sympathetic nervous system to get up and answer the door when the doorbell rings. If you need to get up and go to the bathroom, you're utilizing your sympathetic nervous system. When you're exercising, sympathetic nervous system, fight or flight. Other emotions that you might feel in your sympathetic nervous system are anger, frustration, uh, edginess, like I said. Um, little snappy, right? And it's it's when your body is like, who do we need to protect? And what do we need to do? And then your freeze, your dorsal vagal nervous system, this is where your body is like, whoa, don't move, shut down. We're overwhelmed. We need to hide. We can't handle this. We cannot do anything. We freeze. It's your freeze response. Okay. Now, a lot of people think that fight or flight and freeze are personality traits, and that is not correct. You think, oh, that person is a fighter. 
Oh, she's a flighter. She always runs away from problems. Oh, she's always like, like, like I used to think before I was trained in this, I used to think that my daughter was just a fighter because she's growing up with three other boys. Right. And when she, from when she was two on, if, if she ever felt threatened, she would bite, she would kick, she would hit. And all my other kids, it, well, Dean, the baby, he's that way too. He fights, he, he yells, he screams, he gets really, really angry. He tells us I'm not doing that, whatever. That's his sympathetic nervous system. And so I just thought, oh, she's a fighter. She's a fighter. And then Chase and Brennan, they just run away when she comes at them to like scratch them and claw them and, or bite them or whatever. When she was little, sometimes she still goes after them and they still run away, right? That's flight. And so then you think, oh, they're just flighters. They just run away. No, this is all wrong. It's not a personality trait. I used to say, oh, I'm a freezer. I'm so weak. If I was in a really horrible, uh, you know, like attack, like I, I've, I've often said, like, if I was in those towers, um, in, in 9-11, if I had been in the twin towers, I for sure would have died because I'm a freezer. How do you define yourself? Are you like, I know that people think this is a personality trait and it's wrong. It's a thought error. It's literally proven in the polyvagal theory. Systematically, we can prove it in a court of law. Neuroscience here, you guys, this is neuroscience. And that that's not true. But how have you, not knowing this till today, how have you defined yourself as a freezer, a fighter, a flighter? And let me explain to you what's actually going on, okay? What happens is when your body perceives a threat, it instinctively makes a decision in an instant without asking you, doesn't have to do with personality at all. It instinctively decides, how can we survive this best? And in an instant, without asking you what you think, without referring to your opinion at all, it just decides and does something. And it does it based off of its perceived intuition of how it's going to live best in this situation. So for someone that's maybe getting yelled at by their husband, your body might perceive that the best way to survive that is to get really quiet and really small and turn kind of inward. That's a freeze response. You're not choosing it. It's not a personality trait. It doesn't mean you are weak. This is the biggest misconception about freeze ever. And I want to correct it today so you never have to think that you are weak again if you freeze in those situations, especially with trauma and abuse. I used to beat myself up for this all the time. I would say, oh, I just don't know why I stayed so long. I just don't understand. Like, why did I just freeze and not say anything? Because my body intuitively was making the choice that red light freeze, be still, be quiet was the best way to survive that threat. Now, it might be that you're getting attacked. Maybe you're on the street. Maybe someone's trying to grab your purse, grab your bag. And all of a sudden you're just like hitting them, hitting them, hitting them. You're punching them. You're scratching them. You're biting them. And you, the, the person trying to steal your purse, they run off and they're like, I'm not gonna, she's, I wasn't, didn't think she was gonna be such a fighter, right? She doesn't look like a fighter. It's because it's not a personality trait. It's your body deciding intuitively how are we going to survive this situation best? I was watching a Netflix show a couple of weeks ago. I think it's called New York Emergency, something like that. It, 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 I'm sure if you go to Netflix and you just type in NY or NYC or NYC Emergency or whatever, it'll come up. But on the very last episode, there was a, a story of a young boy who he was walking home from school and there was gun violence happening around him, nothing to do with him. And he got shot in the hip. He said, <clears throat> and the surgeon, he was like, 
He was like, we're not going to operate on you because the bullet is lodged between your pelvis and your back and it's not hurting anything and it's not going anywhere. And so we do more damage going in and trying to get it out than we would just leave it there. Like you can live with bullets in your body. And of course my mind's like, but what does he do when he goes through, you know, TSA? Like when you walk through the metal detector before you walk in, are you like, Hey, just want to let you know, I have a bullet in my body. I'm going to, it's going to go off here. You're going to want to scan me. Like, is that what happens? Is that a thing? If you know about this, let me know. Because in my mind, I'm like, if you're taking a bullet and you're keeping it in your body for the rest of your life, like it's going to show up in places, <laughs> right? So anyway, so they said to him, like, what happened? Like when he was conscious and everything. And he said, yeah, I was just walking home from school. And all of a sudden I just heard gunshots. And like, I just like, I just instinctively like dropped down and covered my head. And I was like, oh, that was his dorsal vagal. He's in freeze. His body assessed the situation before his brain could even access it, right? And decided to stop, drop, and cover just instinctively. We are animals. Did you know? So we have animal instincts to protect us that are innate. We are born with freeze and fight or flight. Okay. So some people in that situation, their body, their nervous system may have said run, but it's not a personality trait. It's how your nervous system responds to perceived danger. Okay. So why is this such a big deal? Sounds like this would be great. Like how is this causing us any problems? We were made for our bodies to respond to acute danger in this way, to get us out of a problem in a hurry. It's why when there's an accident on the freeway and someone, like there's just someone that's trapped inside of a car and humans exhibit superhuman strength to either, you know, like get metal off of the car so that you can get the person out or lift a whole car off of someone. It's like the Hulk. It's like a superhuman just takes over. It's cortisol and adrenaline that's released when you are in your fight or flight or freeze response. In both of them, you're getting tons and tons of cortisol and adrenaline. And when you're in an abusive relationship, those hormones it's literally like your hypothalamus in your brain sends a message to your pituitary gland. And then your pituitary gland sends a message to your adrenals that are just above your kidneys and your back. And it goes cortisol, cortisol, we need cortisol. And upon the first time of abuse, it just starts pumping it out, pumping it out, pumping it out. And normally though, danger is supposed to come and go. So this acute stress response that we have with our bodies that we're born with it's not meant to pump cortisol and adrenaline all the time. But when we're in an abusive situation or we have unresolved trauma or we're in a work environment where we're constantly traumatizing ourselves by what we think we need to do and how we think we need to perform and how we think we need to excel and how we can't lose our rank and how we have to win this prize or what will people think if we don't? When all of those things happen, our brain is going to be in a constant state of fight or flight or freeze. And that is going to look different depending on how your body perceives the danger, but you're either going to be working your business all the time in burnout. Just for example, those of you, I know we have a lot of network marketers here, or maybe I know we have other, like other professions now that listen to our podcast. Hi, we're so glad that you're here. And, um, and then we have our freeze response where it's like, I don't, I, I'm not taking action in my business and I don't know why. And I'm just so tired. And, you know, this one time I worked for this cruise and it just like ruined my business and ruined my team. And now I'm just like, just can't ever get out of this like adrenal fatigue that I'm still in from this thing that happened back in 2017 or whatever it was like, this is just an example. Right. And so, um, and so either way, your body is just constantly pumping out cortisol and adrenaline, and it was never made to do that long-term. It was made to do it in an acute stress response to save your life. But when we have trauma and when we have abuse and when we have burnout, that's what trauma and abuse leads to, by the way, when we have those things, your body is in a constant chronic stress response. And what we know about a constant, constant chronic stress response is that your body starts to break down because it's not supposed to have all that adrenaline and cortisol running through it all the time. So you start to develop insomnia. You start to have thyroid issues. You start to have blood sugar imbalance problems. 
you start to get really puffy and inflamed. You start to have heart issues. Maybe you develop fibromyalgia. You start to have other autoimmune issues and you just can't figure out why. Because you've been taking these supplements that make you feel so good. And why are you feeling so bad? Does this happen to you? Maybe you gain weight again, right? Now, this is so common for network marketers, no matter what it is that you're selling. Because you have to engage your sympathetic nervous system to work and build a business. Did you know? That's going to require a lot of cortisol and adrenaline. And if your ventral vagus green safe zone is not well toned, then you're going to live in fight or flight or freeze all the time. And this is going to mean that you're going to have so much adrenaline and cortisol just pumping through your body all the time. And what we need to do to get you better, no matter what kind of trauma and abuse you've been through, is strengthen and tone this green ventral vagal nerve inside of your body. There are six different exercises that you can do. Everything from a specific way that I teach you how to breathe. Again, go to emilygibsoncoaching.com forward slash heal yourself. It's going to show you how to breathe. It's very, very simple. It will take no time in your day. You can literally do it while you're laying in your bed at night before you go to bed. You could do it while you're in the shower. You could do it while you're driving the car. It's so easy. Okay. So it is breathing exercises. It's listening to music and singing the words aloud because that stimulates your vocal cords. It is doing cold plunges or I'm like not wanting to do that right now. So what I've done is like the cold showers, but that's not even, I didn't even have to do that to get the results that I've had in healing my nervous system and breaking my trauma bonds. Okay. We'll talk about trauma bonds next week because they're really important to understand in this process because there's its own psychological chemical addiction going on there. And it's really important that you understand because you might be trauma bonded to someone in your life or even your business, and you don't have to leave your business. You don't have to leave your spouse if you don't want to, if you are realizing that you're in an abusive relationship and you do want to leave, ask for help. You can email me at any time. Hello at emilygibsoncoaching.com. You can drop a message to our team, the team at emilygibsoncoaching.com. If you're interested in private coaching packages and what we have to offer specifically for narcissistic recovery and abuse or any sort of trauma. People message me all the time. They're like, so I want to work with you, but like, can I do personal stuff or do I have to do business? You can absolutely do personal with me, whatever, whatever is right for you, whatever, however you want to show up. It's your time to heal yourself in whatever way I can serve you. That's what I want to help you with. Okay. So There's these six exercises that are going to help tone this ventral vagus nerve inside of your body that you're not born with. And if your parents were not very nurturing, maybe they they may let you cry it out a lot. They didn't pick you up very much. Maybe they pick you up, fed you and put you down. Maybe you were at daycare and nobody really held you that much or whatever it was, or maybe you had childhood abuse or trauma. You're not going to have a very toned ventral vagus nerve. It's taught. It has to be taught by parents. Must You are not born with it. You're only born with freeze and fight or flight to save your life, but you are totally helpless. And so you have to, as a baby, but the good news is, is you can learn it now and you can learn it very quickly. It doesn't take very long. Like I said, we are seeing people have results within 72 hours of getting the download in their hands. It's just a free download that I literally made for you on a whim. Cause I was like, people need to know this on that snowy night that I was telling you about. Okay. So I want you to go to the website right now, emilygibsoncoaching.com forward slash heal yourself. You'll type in your email and it will be an instant in your inbox. Sometimes it takes like five or 10 minutes, just depends on the the delivery service and the websites talking to each other and all that. But it's set up to just send it to you without any action on anyone's part. So if it's like two o'clock in the morning and you need it, go right there, it'll send to you, okay? But I want you to go there and I want you just to give yourself a chance because this has absolutely changed my life. Healing your body, strengthening this ventral vagus nerve, is going to strengthen and tone this nerve in your body. And it's going to help you practice going in and out of fight or flight so that when you are going to, we're going to have, we're never going to get rid of these. We want fight or flight. It's how we get up and walk to the bathroom. It's how we get up and answer the door. It's also how we run away from a bear when it's chasing us. Anyone been ever chased by a bear? I haven't, but it seems like a good example. (laughs) 
it's, it's why we hide when we think someone's trying to break into our house. Cause we've watched too many episodes of Oprah. <laughs> we want it. We want it there, but we don't want to stay there chronically. We want to teach and train our ventral vagus nerve, the green light in order to get from red to green. We can't just go like red, boom, green. No, no. In red, I want you to wrap yourself up in a heat blanket. I want you to read a book. I want you to take a bath. I want you to listen to really soothing music. And then from there, you're going to be closer to the yellow light, that fight or flight, where you're going to be a little bit edgy, a little bit on edge. Sometimes you'll actually have your body shake after you've had a big surge of cortisol or adrenaline. That uh, that can be a trauma response if you like have to be in the room with your abuser or um, maybe you were in a really bad car accident and um, you have to go see the car. You might shake. That's because adrenaline cortisol trauma response. And the shaking is actually getting your body. It's getting the adrenaline and cortisol out of your body. It's sort of like peeing it out, but in the shakes. And the only animals on earth that don't allow the shakes are humans and zoo animals in captivity. Interesting, right? All other animals, they have no problem getting rid of their cortisol and their adrenaline in a fight or flight response or dorsal vagal. They just shake it off right after and then they heal and they go about their life and they don't have this chronic stress response like we do as humans. But see, as humans, we worry about what people are going to think if they see us shaking and what does it mean about us? So we suppress it. And then what happens when we suppress our emotions, my friend, if you've been here on the podcast before now, when we suppress our emotions, our negative emotions, they build up in our body, build and build and build, and they are bigger and worse to process later. So that's why I want you to take a bath. I want you to allow the shaking. If you're having some shaking going on, read a book, light a candle, go on a walk, listen to some music. You don't have to like sing to it or anything. Just listen to the nice soothing music. Maybe a little Enya. What was the other one? Who was the, this is not what I listened to, by the way. <laughs> Sometimes I have like one Enya song that I like from Lord of the Rings. May it be, I love that song. Uh, but I have like a whole playlist of soft, soothing music that I listen to when I notice that I'm in freeze. Okay. So start noticing, like, when are you in freeze? What emotions are you feeling? It's going to be a lot of overwhelm, hiding, quiet, um, don't want to go anywhere. The world is probably going to feel like, like it's not somewhere that you, um, that like, you, you, you just don't want to leave your house. That's what freeze is going to be in fight or flight. It's going to, you're going to have anger and frustration. You're mobilizing that energy, right? A little edgy, a little snappy. That's your sympathetic nervous system, your yellow light. That's going to be the one where, um, the world feels like you can't trust it. Can't trust anyone or anything. That's fight or flight, sympathetic. And then once you're there, you can do those, the, the six exercises in that I gave you in that worksheet that you're going to go download to change your life forever. Why wouldn't you honestly? And then, um, and then you're going to be able to get through those breathing exercises through the vocal cord stimulation. If you decide to do cold plunges or cold showers, not required for healing, by the way, my friends. Uh, but for those of you that are into that, cause you like love gut health and you love immune system stuff, like that's going to be your jam. But that toning of that ventral vagus nerve is going to happen there when you are trying to move from yellow light to green light. And the more that you practice building that ventral vagus nerve inside of your body, the more you are going to stop having your trauma responses because this muscle just needs to be toned. That's all. And if you need a little bit more help than that, like download the worksheet. If you need more help than that, reach out to me, reach out to my team, book a call with someone on my team and they can figure out what the best thing is for you, where, where you want to fit in, depending on your goals and the type of healing that you need. I have everything from group membership options where you can have workshops and um, live coaching calls in front of others. Or if you're like, oh, I just really want private coaching. We have private coaching options now. You can have packages, mini sessions with three, three sessions with me. We could fix so much in that. There's intermediate sessions, six sessions. Then there's um, advanced sessions where it's 12 sessions with me. Those can be spanned out over the course of six months or a year. All those packages are available on my website. And then if you're like, I just want to like 
level myself up. I want to get a coaching certification. I want to know how to build a business. Even if you don't want to know how to build a business, I think everybody should do the coaching mentorship because it puts you in the room with other people who are in growth and who, who have a growth mindset. You're surrounded by people that want to get better and they're fighting for change and growth and discomfort and it'll just level up your leadership. Like even if you don't want another business, you can apply all the things that I teach you in the coaching mentorship to your current business. Even if you are a stay at home mom and that is your business, all the things, all the principles that I teach you will make you a more organized parent, a better friend, a more empathetic spouse. It will spill over into every area of your life. And that's why I think that everybody at one point in their life should do the coaching mentorship because you'll be certified as a coach and you'll get 16 weeks of leadership training and growth and personal development. And there's a retreat, which by the way, we're taking those retreats internationally here, uh, coming in 2024 and 2025. So if you've ever wanted to make travel part of your personal development, we're going to Italy and Greece in 2024, and we're doing Africa, Kenya, and uh, the Dominican Republic in 2025. So you're not going to want to miss out on this. And those of you that that do our coaching uh, mentorship now this year, you are going to have alumni benefits to come on those trips with us that are going to blow your mind. So anyway, it's so amazing. And all of it has come to pass because I healed my nervous system because I did this really easy. Doesn't take a lot of time, nervous system toning and you can too. All right, my friend, I hope you have an amazing day and I hope this message gives you what you've been searching for like it did me. Bye now.